offended. You know yeah. what I mean? They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. The Jews and the Christians were like, Are you, can you really do this? And he was like, yes, because that's what is absolutely necessary. I will do whatever it takes. So today we are dissecting in modern day terms, 1 Corinthians 9 verses 20 to 23. There it reads, to the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law. So as mm. to win those under the law, to those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law. So mm. as to win those not having the law, to the weak, I became weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means, I might have some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel that I may share in its yeah. blessings. <clears throat> well, this is actually a really good verse and just a part of the Bible in general because Paul brings up a really good point. And to start off the whole entire podcast, we actually wanted Ron, uh, Ronnie and Greg uh, to just talk about it a little bit, the context the context behind it. Why was Paul writing this to the Corinthians? Because this is right to the face, uh, kind of almost like step by step of what he follows in his life. So Ronnie, if you can go into explaining a little bit about that. Sure. Um Corinthians. So the Corinthian church had a lot of trouble. Uh, Paul, on his missionary journeys, land, landed in Corinth and he established the church there. And when he left, there was always this group of very traditional Jews who followed him and mm -hmm. were always causing trouble ever since he left Jerusalem. You know, they, they were very underneath the law. They yeah. sought to themselves follow the law and bring those people bring other people under the law. So they saw they saw Paul as, as a threat, as an enemy. And, you know, you saw that in Damascus and what they did to him there. And I believe right where they, you know, stoned him. And he, yeah. barely, by God's good grace, <laughs> survived. So ever since then, they've been following him. Imagine imagine how big of a threat he was. He was, right. he was, a, he was a, a zealous Jew. And then he converts to Christianity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how, like, that to them was a huge threat. More than any other person. Perhaps even more than Jesus, if you think about it. So when he... When he kept going on his missionary journeys, he would always have this group of people follow him, whether it was in Athens or here, in mm -hmm. this case, Corinth. So he left Corinth and then this group comes in and starts causing trouble, questioning his authority, even though he established that church. He's like, does he really have a right yeah. to uh, to run this church? Does he really right. have where does he get his authority? Where does he get his, uh, you know, his his decree from? Like he doesn't follow. The, he, and then they, they bash him. They, they make lies and threats. He doesn't follow the law. He, he's following um, a false teaching, mm -hmm. and and that stirs up a lot of people. And all of a sudden, the Corinth church starts to separate into into factions. You know, you have there are people saying, "I'm from Apollos," or "I'm from Paul," or "I'm from Jesus," mm -hmm. and that causes a huge rift. And Paul, of course, his heart is aching because, mm -hmm. you know, he, he wants Christ unified, not separated. So he's I right before this chapter, chapter nine, he's explaining. Um, kind of the, what they're saying, like you're, he's he's laying out their premise and their thesis, saying, okay, these are what you're telling, these are your charges against me, and he's saying, listen, like I am not under the law, but for those under the law, I became under the law, and for those who are not under the law, I became as if I'm not under the law, even though I'm not, but I'm under Christ, so that by all means, I might win some some of you. Yeah. yeah and so he's explaining, good. I'm not a transgressor, I'm not a sinner, I'm not doing th these things that they're charging me with. But this is what I am doing. I'm doing everything possible so yeah. that I could at least save some of you wow. in the midst of it. I always thought it was, uh, I loved, that was fantastic. Thank you. Uh, I loved that you touched upon that because reading through Corinthians, I always had this feeling of, why is Paul so defensive? Like, he's <laughs> like, he, it's as if he's like, I know who I am. You don't know me. Like, honestly, I'm thinking like, what? what? In a way, he's going through so much so much trouble just to prove his like kind of his position and I, I mean I'm like I know Paul isn't you know he doesn't have an, an identity crisis he knows who he is why is he trying to prove it and I think it's actually he's trying to give almost an understanding of um oh, oh, by example how we also should um, understand our position and like you were saying he was like look I did not earn this uh position by by being a perfect example of someone who, you know, fulfills the law of Moses. 
And he's saying like, you don't, because it's not because I was, you know, taught by Gal, uh, Galileo or uh, what was it? Gal, uh, what was his name? Uh, uh, Gal- Poly, um, Anyways, he was taught, yeah. he's taught by one of the Greeks, he, by the Greek. Uh, anyways, I'm sorry to anybody out there. He's like, Definitely Greg, wasn't Galileo. Know, not Galileo, but it was, he was taught by, um, by, by the, the big, um, oh, Paul, right? Yes, Paul. Yeah, he, he was, was very educated. Roman very Roman. educated. Yeah, yeah. He was like a very high profile guy. And that's why you were saying that that's why he was such a threat because it's kind of like when you see almost someone in authority and, you know, imagine someone who is already in the public eye, has a lot of authority, has a lot of like respect. And then when he changes and says, I'm following after Jesus, everyone's like, wait, hold up. That guy just did it. Hold up. Like, this is a big deal. And so he, you know, Paul is giving us, he's saying that's not my, in a way it's like, because of what, um, he's explaining his, his choices, you know, he's explaining why he, why someone would be like, okay, you're being hypocritical here, or you did this here, there, why, you know, and everyone has all these questions. And it also brings us like, just a real quick, it also brings us to the, to the fact that you're going to get a lot of questions if you're doing the ministry, right? Like there's going right. to be very true, man. like people, because yeah. I mean, to be honest, some of these, some of the, the examples that he's talking about seem like pretty solid arguments. They're like, that's, that's true. You know, why did he ask for money from this church, but not from that church? Mm-hmm. Why did he do this from that? But, you know, why was he stern with this guy? But then, you know, and, and, and it's like they raise up solid questions. And it's like, if you want to be even close to Paul, you better believe you're going to have to have like almost discussions like Paul, where you're writing chapters of of explanations. And, and it's just because of the fact that, you know, what authority does Paul stand from? The authority of he's coming from the word of God. Jesus himself commanded him through through that uh, encounter on the way to Damascus. Jesus himself commanded him what to do. And so that authority, of course, is going to have to be challenged yeah. by the Pharisees, by everybody else, by even Christian leaders themselves. But even pulling it back now into our modern day culture, whenever we start to follow God, whenever we start to ourselves walk in the way of the truth, you will be encountering way wow. details that in your life that once one one time you can walk into a church and maybe they might not believe in all the you know, free radicalness that you're going through. Randy Clark is a great example of this. Yes. I mean, the, it's a modern day, I would say, even story of some way to what we're talking about of like, he was full on Baptist, like Southern Baptist, if I'm not, which is like the most conservative you can think of, right? Kind of like a zealous Jew back yes. in their time, um, bring this like to a modern day kind of s- spectacle. Um and the man now, he's like on fire for God. Speak like if I'm not mistaken, he's baptized in the Holy Spirit, like and just going crazy for the Lord. You know. Well, y- yes, and that's that's what I'm trying to say is that whenever whenever you start walking this life, God is going to lead you into a whole lot of different churches because even in the church we have people that are don't know who God is. They're sitting there, they're thinking they're checking off the, doc, uh, the check mark, but they don't know who God is. Wow. For instance, when you come up when you come up to a person that's homeless. And uh, they do not have a home. They do not have an etiquette. They do not have a cultural sense or cu- cultural background. I'm not saying that all homeless people are like that, but whenever a person is like that, and you come up to them from a really high class with the highest words vocabulary and everything else that we are trained in school and in college and universities, and you start spouring out the information, you lost them at wow. the third word. Right. And they're not yeah. even going to be able to get even closer to Jesus because. What did you show them? You didn't. You just showed them how high up you were, but nothing else. And so Paul is saying, Paul is here saying is that that whenever we are walking into our Christian life, no matter which consequence, which not consequence, which, no matter which environment we're even in, sometimes we have to stoop down to some people. Wow. Sometimes we have to go up to some people. Sometimes we have to literally just stay the same, just as we are to you know, to our our best friends. But for the main reason and for the sole reason of reaping that harvest to take up that soul, you know, to just be able to convey a message of the gospel in the most simplest term. I think the best example that I have of this is Francis Chan. Whenever he said that his last uh, missionary trip before he went into uh, decided, like, I'm going to China, I'm leaving everything, I'm going to China, is he went to, uh, I don't know which which place, but it was like three hour car ride, two hour hike to get to this village with like these little huts that people who have not even seen civilization and they used a translator from Francis to a translator from another person to a translator to another person. He'd come into this person's hut and he would just share the gospel. He's not going to come up there like he would be coming up on stage. Mm. He's going to come up with the cultural norms that they have to reach their hearts. Absolutely. Right. I think that's the easiest way I can, I can put it if well, you want to add on to that. Greg. Yeah. Uh, if you, yeah. 
so the thing is, I mean, I think people talk about this and it's, it's so sad that to be honest, this conversation, like about this scripture sometimes gets to this, to something that sounds like this, where people are like, yeah, but you can't be worldly because we're not supposed to be like the world. And it's like, absolutely not. But at the same time, I mean, you're not going to go to a strip club, but at the same time, <laughs> I mean, but at the same time, it's kind of like, do you realize what Paul is really saying here? He's not yes. saying guys be like the world. What he's saying is take every barrier away from the gospel being that. preached. Like, do Ooh, not like, God, he's kind of like, if there's something in between you and, the, and, and sharing the gospel with someone, mm. and it's something like, and it's something like, for example, doctrine, like maybe someone's oh. like, oh yeah, we're more conservative. And then you're like, listen, well, I'm more liberal. And then that's all you care about. Like, if, if that's a barrier for the gospel, you better forget, right. you better forget your, your, your little, you know, thoughts on, on, on doctrine. And you're like, the gospel is more important than my personal views. Amen. The gospel is, that is, you know, doing his work. Yes. Um, and, and at the end of the day, it's, it's like, sometimes you don't, you don't realize it's, it, it, the thought is, is so, people are so worried about them looking still, meaning like they don't want to look worldly. So, so look how funny this looks, right? I don't want to be worldly to when I'm like, as in, I don't want to become worldly in sharing the gospel. So I won't share the gospel. And do you realize what you just said there? I'm more, I'm more worried. I'm more worried about how I appear, how I appear and like, and how kind of me, I'm more worried about me than I'm worried about that, like that other guy. And that's ridiculous. How how can you, how can you go out preaching the gospel saying, you know what? I don't want to like stain my, my beautiful, well, then robes then before the, the Lord other. by, you know, mm-hmm. by stooping down to that person. Yes. And obviously there's some clear things like sin is, is absolutely under no circumstances a way to win people. But One, Well, no, there, there's the other subject of you coming to a church and they say, well, you can't do this in our church. And you're just like, well, then I'm out of here. Yeah. Like, there's well, still well think preach. about Jesus. Look, like going back to what you were saying, like, you know, you said the strip club example, right? Well, think about Jesus. He went I to, he went, he went to. A Positive. bar, he, he went to the bar, sat down with tax collectors, people who were drinking, and he's like, yeah, guys, you know, what's up? Like, it's like we forget the tax collectors. These are the kind of guys who would, would they will trick you out of your money. These are the kind of guys who will, you know, they will, they will steal from you practically, and nobody liked them. Prostitutes are not like, they're not people who, they're not role models for your kids. Like, come on, this no. is not, you know, and it, Jesus hung out with people who you wouldn't want your kids to hang out with. Do you realize that? Like, yeah. it doesn't mean that, yeah, there were, you know, you know, you have to understand that there, there, it was within context and like he was, you know, bringing them to Jesus and, and yeah, like. He was bringing the most despised people of society because back in that day, tax collectors, because they worked for the Roman Empire, right? And they were they were mm. viewed as traitors to the to the country, to Israel. Mm. Right. They they That's represented these houses and they, they did steal as well. So and they they, they were became rich. Right. They did it for money. So prostitutes, you know, and tax collectors within that system of government, within, you know, the religious system that they had there, they were among the most despised and evil people of their day. So for Jesus to be hanging out with these people, yes, it's an it's inviting judgment from people who have a judgmental mind right yeah. but for someone who is of the spirit you know like this guy if if he doesn't if he's not reaching out to them who will because we're not going right. to do it right so so he did it and he he brought up you know he so opened good. kind of the door for it but check this out what you you said really like I, I just had a huge thought so this is the real essence of today what we're dealing with in today's day like you become a christian and then what happens then you kind of just stay in your christian like bubble you go to church on Sundays. Mm. Um, if you're, if you want, you know, extra points, you're gonna go on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> and then if and you Friday, and even. if you want, if you really want the max points, you're gonna go on a Monday or a Tuesday. Or you Ooh. might even join the worship. Actually, team, right, go on a missions trip. A missions trip to That's Mexico. Mi- obliga- obligatory mission trip in the summer. And don't forget to take that Instagram pic because right. you know, right, right. <laughs> but here's the thing: who are you reaching? Besides maybe on that mission trip, who are you really reaching? You're you're reaching yourself, maybe your family, and church people. So you're almost the you're almost the the least effective at church. I agree. And but here's here's where this verse comes in though. I mean those things some of those things are, are necessary. You need to worship, you need to fellowship, you need to build each other up, but you're not reaching anybody but yourself. So it's oh it's a very selfish thing to do if that's all you're doing. What Paul's saying is, you know what? 
I'm going to become all things to all people that by all means, I will mm. win some of you. Because Come if on. I stay at church and just do my church thing, right. I will win no one because Come you're on. already won, apparently. You're but, right. but, if I, but if, I, but if, I, if I'm going to win anybody, I need to be in the game. And that's oh. outside. And guess what? Your People are going to judge you for being in the they game. Will. You're going to go out to, you're going to go out with, with friends who are non-believers, you know, or people, right? Your coworkers, they're going out for a drink, for a night out to drink, right? Mm. And some people are going to be like, oh, alcohol? Heathen, you know what I mean? Well, or you're, you're well, hanging social thing is, at a friend's I mean, party, but how, who's going to reach these people? That doesn't mean you partake in their sin. You don't do that. You don't have to partake in their sin, but just because you're around them doesn't mean... So, for instance, y- your presence by itself is able to show your the presence that rests on you. Yeah. When, when you walk into the room, you change the presence. You change the atmosphere because you have the presence of Jesus on you. You have the Holy yeah. Spirit. And so as you walk into these places, yeah, you don't drink, but, but your conversation, your talk gives them an open... Like for instance, just just from my life, nurses in general, a lot of them, a, a lot of them are not Christian. They're yeah. just back and forth. You know, they don't believe anything. Some of them are just all science. But whenever I'm just able to be open, my life transparent as possible. The fact is that I'm not different in church. I'm not different at work. I'm not different in school. I'm not different at home. I'm the same person all throughout. And whenever you become that, you are able to be yourself to all people in all times, in all necessities. And the people see that, they're like, I need help. I'm going to go to the most open person to find wow. it. And that person is right there standing in front of them, which is in some cases is me. Uh, I'm able to bring them not only help physically, but help spiritually wow. and mentally. Just check off all boxes because I have the Lord next to me. So taking back your example of you know the church, like what are we doing in modern day? You know, the church in general, it's like a hospital. So to elaborate on your thing, this will actually click back with something we were talking about before, which is why was it such a threat that Paul was becoming this Christian and like, you know, why didn't they just like, oh, okay, that's fine. It's just one person like, you know, because of this. So watch, there's these people in life that they're just complacent where they are. It's like a complacent nurse at a hospital, which the church is a hospital. And it's like, you know what? Uh, I got these five patients, they're healed, and I just need to like once in an hour, like go and check up on them. I don't want to do more work. Why would I go out there and get more people into this hospital? You know, this is just more work for me. Mm -hmm. This is where it happens because those people who are like, man, that one nurse who really has a hunger to heal people, it threatens the comfortability of all the other nurses who are just sitting on the couch and just chilling because they know if more people come in, that's more work work for them. More work. More work. Look at Trump. This is a great example. He was, so to say, in the clique or the circle of like taking back like um, Paul and the Jews, he was in that clique of like those very prominent men of that culture. He stepped out and he became president, right? And he just started draining the swamp. (laughs) He's like, boom, boom, boom. And it, it that's where we saw, saw like in our modern day time how the hornet's nest just started going up. oh my goodness this guy like was once part of us yeah. and now he's going against us and he knows all this stuff about us and he knows the truth about us well yeah. i mean another christian example would be andre chapel come on he's a christian pastor respected by many churches the moment that he he allows god to move freely in the in the kingdom and in the world i mean when he used to come to orlando as far as I know, I've never been in one of these, but like he would go out to, he'd have his conference and then he'd take people and he'd go out to the street and start evangelizing with people. It's like, there's no difference. And like people right away started judging, hating on him, saying that he's a, he's a false teacher. Get out of here. Because why? Because he became, he didn't, he didn't have a resting gospel. He had an active gospel. Come on. That's good. Right there. And whenever the active gospel becomes a reality in your life. Yeah people are going to be right away stirred up, as you said. Yeah. I know for myself, just working in the hospital, that's funny how you're talking about nurses. I'm the one who's a nurse. <laughs> First <laughs> the of Lord all. just put it in my mind and I'm I love like... It. I love it. No, yeah. like, oh, it's called... I'm working in the hospital and uh, if I'm... I don't like to sit... I don't like to sit around. I don't... I like to always boom, 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 get my stuff done. And I, I'm, always, I'm always helping confirm. every other nurse that's on the floor as much as I can. That's just... Come that's on. just who I am. I, do, I cannot sit around. My dad marries me that way. But it does stir people up. They're like, why? Why are you doing this? Why are you why? going that extra mile? Why we, or my favorite, my favorite is that there's patients that need someone to talk to. 
and no one's able to talk to them. Mm. And the person, yeah. the people are just, oh, they're fine. And they leave. And it's just like, no, take your time. Sit down and talk to them. Um, let's, let's circle back to this real quick because this is this is actually an important topic i wanted to now bring up the example if unless you have something else to say ronnie um i just have one, one last thing yes please um while while this is very applicable to the church world like you know being in in church paul is really i think it, his uh i think his chief aim is to call out like his accusers yes. who accused him of being outside of the church world mm. he was in the world but not of the world yeah. and because wow. of that both sides were offended. You know yep. what I mean? They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. The Jews and the Christians were like, Are you can you really do this? And he was like, Yes, because that's what is absolutely necessary. I will do whatever it takes. Mm. And you can judge me all day long, but I will reach the people that the Lord has commissioned me to. Yeah. And now going up to that's actually really good. Just to cycle back off that just for a quick second before we go into the next transition about Ronnie's life. Um, let's go about that he was literally following Jesus, Jesus example as, as you said before and greg said uh, about because jesus was not of the world because when he was in the world he was from the United kingdom but he was also born born a jew but was not jewish technically speaking because he wasn't following any of their uh, he wasn't following the customs that they had in place to the t like they were following and so both sides get stirred up when you do that because you're moving free with God. So, Ronnie, I just want to bring this back to your life because I think that out of all of us, I mean, we've, we've been here in America and uh, just like you went to, during your naval service, you went to Japan, a culture that's completely out of yourself, a culture that's just, um, first of all, once again, thank you for your service. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. A culture that's honored, completely honored. out of yourself. And it, the way you described it on, on the last po podcast episode, um, whenever we were editing, we're going to probably put it up here. Um if you guys can watch it, you were describing that they are very a religious culture. There's almost no religion there. They or agnostic. Yeah, agno very, agnostic. Very, yeah. And so, if you could just say, how did you become a Japanese person to them mm. while being a full Christian person? Very hard. <laughs> very <laughs> uh, not easily. But um, you know what's funny is because I I think I use this verse during that podcast to mm. describe like what I had to do. Come on. If I remember correctly, and, and and this is a verse that I've committed to memory because once I got to it, it just so beautiful. It really is the gospel in a very, you know, nice way. And One it, sentence liner, right? Yeah. Well, but um, so a, a little bit of background of the Japanese culture. Uh, it's a very homogenous society. So like ninety nine point like nine percent of people in Japan are Japanese. It's very different from the United States, where. I mean, look, just this table alone, man. like you have got me, you know, like, you know, right, right. And so many, you know, different cultures represented in church. And it's just, it's very um, diverse. Mm. That is a melting pot, right? That's not the case in Japan melting at pot. all. I like that. Like when you, when you go to Japan, if you're a foreigner, you stick out like a sore thumb. It's just super <laughs> obvious that you're what they call a gaijin, the Japanese word foreigner. Right. You know, and they'll, you know, they'll call you that. Like it's, a, it's just, a, for them, it's a normal thing. Like, hey, well, we grew up with, um, you know, mostly Japanese. So when we see a foreigner, we're gonna kind of identify you and call you out a little bit, maybe even treat you a little bit differently, like racism not, a little yeah, bit a little in there. Low key, but very politely. Like maybe you can't come to certain restaurants because you know, for whatever reason, I've experienced that a little bit. Right. So, so it's not easy to to just just being a foreigner. For, like if you don't even equate Christianity or religion, just to come from another country to Japan is not easy. It's difficult. Mm. So the the ho the chances of you assimilating to that culture are not very high, mm -hmm. and the and the slim chance that you do assimilate to that culture, you know, you can't you ha if you're going to reach the Japanese people, you have to assimilate. You have to accept their norms almost. So mm -hmm. they're a very communal society. It's all about the community and not the individual. They're a very respectful society, very orderly, quiet, clean. So you know that that part's actually kind of easy to get used to. Here's the part that's not. You're right. They're very agnostic. So the main religion in in Japan is Shinto with and Buddhism. And they can exist, they can coexist mm -hmm. because they accept all of the, the gods in those religions. To them, it's not really a religion, it's just it's kind of like a fact of life. Yeah. Um, but they're it's never personal. It's like these mm -hmm. gods exist. Like the Shinto is the uh, ancient Japanese religion. Buddhism mm -hmm. came from the China area and then you know migrated to Japan. Gotcha. So there's all these gods. Especially Buddhism, you know, there's tons of gods there. And then Shinto is more of a nature. Kind of like Hinduism has a, a lot of gods. But. Right, right. And they kind of just accept, they, they accept 
these gods and they pay um, homage to these gods as for blessings. You know, you'll see like a few of the gods in their household and, you know, they'll pay respects. There's a, there's temples everywhere. Uh, you don't have to go very far to, to go to temples. They're actually really, really beautiful. Um, but they're there, but it's never personal. Right. And right. so when you bring Christianity, you have to overcome two boundaries. The first one is it's a Western religion. So, so again, Japan is a very close, isolated society. It's been that way for hundreds of years, uh, probably more. Uh, the, the United States, a little bit of history, well, had to force it open a little I, bit. I have a quick question. Sure. You said it's a Western religion. What, you're, yes. you're talking about Christianity? Or? Yes. Christianity is a Western religion. To, to them. To the Eastern part of the okay, world. Okay, that's yes. how they view it. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. You bring Christianity and you're talking about the West. So they don't view mm. it as like Israel and like no. Jewish no, no, type no, no. They, like origination. Yeah. Okay. So it's yeah. American essentially to them. Yes. Okay. Understood. Yes. Maybe that's what maybe that's why it was uh deferred from Paul to go into Asia. <laughs> Wait, they, no. Historically, Japan has been a very, very close society. It took several attempts by the, by the United States to open Japan. And it took steamboats that they thought were dragons to be like, okay, uh, <laughs> what? we're going to let no you way. in. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's actually a very wow. cool history, his, uh, historical uh, story. But, you know, long story short, they you have to overcome the fact that it's a Western religion. And to them, they're very closed off by it. If one of their family members becomes a Christian, and it, there's even a hint of traditional in their in their in their culture in their in that part of the family, mm -hmm. they view it as a betrayal of the family. And you betraying mm -hmm. the, the family, like I said, it's a very community it's almost like thing. muslims because like if you become yeah, christian yeah. you get kicked out of everything right right, right. or so, even beheaded i think so too. you can so it's not that extreme but you can you can definitely get kicked out of the family uh you can be seen as a as a, as a traitor to your country and to your you know to your family and to your culture so you have to overcome that and a lot of people are hesitant just for that reason to even jump in like it's a very isolationist society so they will avoid it and then if you do get past that, then you have to overcome the their perception of religion where it's like, wait, 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 you're Jesus? I'll, okay, I accept Jesus. I'm going to put him on the pedestal mm -hmm. with the other gods and, you know, I'm going to I'm going to pay homage to him and, you know, I'm going to ask for blessings. But it's never personal. And that's the thing. You have to overcome the Western part and then you have to overcome this is not uh, this is not a like an addition in addition to. So would you have to challenge it? Challenge almost their gods with jesus yeah of course well, he, because to show to show like what a true god because like for instance if you come in there and you do service but <clears throat> you do service and there's zero miracle signs and wonders it's just service they're going to view it as just a gathering mm -hmm. respect the gathering sit there because they're very respectful people so they're going to sit there listen to the whole thing and leave hopefully god touches their heart but then when you come in with the power of god wow. then you come in with an actual for the first time in in a very long time, I guess since since witchcraft existed in Japan, for the first time in, in a very long time, all of a sudden you bring power into. And this is how we did it. So that, I'm really glad you said that. If the gospel comes to, to Japan, and it has come to Japan, and it was not effective, um, I I know that the pastor, one of the pastors in Japan, uh, he had a vision from God that mm -hmm. he a wave was going to come to Japan, and he told you know his his, his fellow ministers, and they they told, they told him the truth. No one succeeds in Japan. <laughs> Your career will end in Japan. Your ministry is over in Japan. Ministry it's like, it, graveyard. Yes, exactly. That's, that's exactly. like Orlando. Used exactly. To be. So, so, and he went because he felt so convicted. His, wow. Him and his wife got the same vision, you know, same day, same night. Like the Lord is sending them to Japan. So they went. And recently there has been started a, like a, almost a budding of, of Christianity. But for a long time, the gospel was just ineffective in Japan. Among the highest suicide rates in the world. Yeah. Right. Okay. Among the craziest working hours, among please, the craziest conditions. Please share how, what is the percentage of Christians? I know it's. Oh, it's like less than 1%. Less than yeah, 1%. yeah. And it's, that's, wow. and that's, yeah. you said, you that's told crazy. me that's all Christian denominations yeah. together. Yes. You know, I just, yes. I just wanted to point out that we, we as Christians, we always go to Nicaragua, Guatemala, like all these places because they're in need. And like, there's so much Christians in those places too, but there's also like witchcraft and everything else. But like Japan has, is like a top like pretty much a first world country yeah. in most places because some of them are some of the places is like a third right. world country. But like it's a first world country, but like it's so poor in actual Jesus. We're afraid to go there. Like we're afraid poor that we, spirit. we go there and, you know, we're not going to be effective. And wow. I, I understand. But look, look, people are literally dying. They're killing themselves. Yes, they are. Because they have no hope. Literally, that's how that's how can suicide you, happens. You can you no talk hope. a little bit yeah, about Yeah, can you, can you explain to yourself, uh, to us real quickly? Um, 
the part where the girl was coming from the work you were telling us in the oh, last yeah. podcast oh, yeah, just yeah, if you can yeah, repeat yeah. that again because that was a really right. powerful so story that's what um that's what really opened my eyes to how bad the suicide rate is over there um you know when you come in from the united states you hear a little bit of statistics you're like okay that's that's nice and then you know you kind of just go about your business but then it hit home when i was in the train station with my friend and uh the train is always on time if it's late something is majorly wrong trains there are just very very punctual so the train was late and i'm like the world is ending. You know, what's going on? You know, and there was an alert on the screen. I can't read Japanese, so I was like, "Can you can you tell me what happened?" And she's like, "Um, passenger injury." She's like, and "I'm like, what does that mean?" She's like, "Oh, I think somebody jumped in front of the train again." And I'm like, "I was stunned." I'm like, "Are you serious?" She's like, "Yeah, but that happens all the time." And I'm like, "What do wow. you mean?" She's like, "In my route, she works in Tokyo. On my route to work, it's particularly heavy. It happens all, oh, every morning. Wow. Several people throw themselves in front of the train and just end it all." And, and it's just a fact of life there. You kind of just get used to it. And can you imagine how dark and hopeless a society has to be where that's become normal? Normal. Where you've yeah, become desensitized so to sad. it. Where you say, yeah, that's that's part of my routine. Sometimes. <laughs> you, bec- you have to become so conditioned mentally to that. And it's like, I, it blows yeah. my mind. And so I really took a step back, you know, and maybe even like prayed like for a little bit like, Lord, like this is heavy. Like help me right. to like understand what my friend just told me. Mm-hmm. So we did talk about it a little bit more. But like, that's when I realized like Japan, like it's very obvious without the gospel there, the enemy has a huge stronghold. Right. That makes sense. So how do you win the Japanese people? Like Paul said to the Japanese, mm. I became like the Japanese that I might win the Japanese. Come on. So this is what we did. So the church, there's a, there's a, you know, there's a church there that has really been it's starting to get very effective at what they've been doing. They've been perfecting their craft for about 15 years now. So essentially Japanese people are really into like flashy things. It's a modern society. They love technology. They love like the newest thing. So what we do is we come out to the train stations where, you know, Japanese people congregate and go everywhere. And we, we, we kind of, we kind of grab them almost like we Mm -hmm. go to the train station and we play live music. We call it street live. So you bring a cajon, you bring a guitar, you bring a few mics and you just start playing music. And they love karaoke. Karaoke is actually a Japanese word. So they oh. love karaoke. That's how you, that's how you do it. That. You, you, you use something that, that is theirs. And then you, you, that's how you get their attention. They're like, wait, wait, there's live music and so, it's karaoke? So just, just as a quick inter- interruption, it almost brings back the story of when Paul uh, comes into a uh, city and just sits there and observes and soaks in the culture. And then he's able to talk to them on their level. Yeah, exactly. like how he That's quoted how, how he quoted the um he's he quoted their philosophers and some of the poetry of that time if you guys remember yeah. um the and, unknown god yeah yeah, yeah. That was, I, yeah that's that so great. slick yeah. like paul is just oof. he's like i know that god <laughs> <laughs> he's like yeah let me yeah. let me let me make him known to you because actually you know i know that's yeah. awesome but like exactly like imagine if we came into that situation mm. saying like hey we're christians and we want you to be christian let's do it they would be so turned off by it. they'd be like who are you they wouldn't even talk they to wouldn't, you they, sure. they, they, they would not just walk. you're right they would not talk to you they will literally avoid you and you see that because there's a lot of missionaries that attempt, like from other denominations Jehovah's Witness and Mormons, they're very aggressive. They go there and they are like in the train stations too. Hmm. And you just see Japanese people walking by. They're like, we, we, right. we don't have time for this. But we are out there and we're like, you know, with the joy of the Lord, we're singing these worship songs in Japanese. So imagine resurrecting in Japanese, Come which on. I actually learned. I love it. And and you you will get people watching you for a few minutes. Then you have, we, we tell some of the people there who can speak Japanese because I can't, you know, like, hey, can you go talk to them real quick? And then you're like, hey, how, how was your day? Can we, uh, you know, can, uh, how can we help? Can we pray for you? All of a sudden their interest is peaked because uh, they're not used to something like that. Yeah. Right. And then you like, you say, Hey, uh, we're having a gathering on Sunday. Uh, you're free to come with your family. We have, you know, kids, mm. uh, kids ministry too. And, you know, just check it out. And then the worship, we're really, they're really trying to reach the young people there because they're the future mm. of that nation. The older generation, of course, they're trying to reach it, but they're very traditional. It's so much harder to reach them. If they we, got we, deep roots. And they do. It is so hard to, to well, change that. Trust me, dude. I tried taking out a stump at my house, man. Yeah. Them roots it's, go well, deep. Yes, yes, and, yes. And it's hard. Yes. I, believe I, I believe I talked to you about this before. But I know the stat- I don't remember if it was you, but I, it remind me if it was. But the statistics on new believers are almost always young people. As in, like in general, the mm-hmm. most response is with young people. You know what I mean? I think like most people who have been saved, if you look at it, 
I, th- I almost believe that like 80% of them are under the age of like 23 or something. Um, you know, like most people who, who, you know, they got saved when they were that age, I, I, I meant to say. Yeah. And um, there was a question though I did want uh, sure. to ask. And, you know, like, I feel like I could I have a lot to say about this myself, but I really want to hear from you. Um, so what would you say? And you guys are going to have to, I know you guys have something to say about this too, but let's, let's have Ronnie go first. So what would you say to those people who are like, okay, okay, this is all nice, right? But you go and tell some Christian people to go and try to win the world and, uh, you know, becoming like them to win them, right? You know, you know getting into their culture. Uh, and then, bam, they start becoming, like, isn't it, the, the, the world isn't getting saved. The Christians are becoming like the world and then they're, they're going to fall into sin and they're going to get into, um, you know, and, and what would you say about people who are concerned about that? They're like, Listen, if I go out and I try to reach out to people, like I'm afraid that I'm going to, you know, I'm going to fall into sin or I'm afraid that I'm going to get pulled in. Like, how do you, um, like, what would you say to those kind of people? Interesting. So, well, that takes a lot of self-awareness. If you, if you know yourself well enough to be like, hey, I might, um, I'm susceptible to the temptations that they are. So if I try to reach them, I might fall for, into their sin. Um, well, props to you first for noticing that. A lot of people wouldn't notice that, but, um. I think that you need to become very grounded in your faith first before mm-hmm. you try to win other people because you will you will probably fall, fall in that, that direction. So like Peter says, he says, make sure of your election and calling always. Yeah. And in this way, it will be provided to you a path to the kingdom, right? Right. Like that's if, if you do that, how can you go wrong? Uh-huh. But okay. I have a just to add on to that because... So my response would be, who are you relying on to keep you? That's good too. Because <laughs> this is the thing. If you're trying to keep yourself through your own strengths, of course you're going to like fail. All the time. Yeah. All the time. Because our righteousness is dirty rags to the Lord. And yeah, you're not going to keep yourself righteous because it's a dirty rag. Like Ooh. when the Lord gives you righteousness, that's a whole nother level. But the, the devil wants you to think that you can keep yourself out of it. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah. this is the realization um, that I, I, I want to ask, like what, so I agree, you should not go into something you're not ready for 100%. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, if you're a, a drug addict, right. And you know, you have a problem still that you're fighting. Don't go to a crack house yeah. to minister. Um, I mean, maybe in a safe environment where a crack addict friend of yours came to your house with other fellow believers who are stronger, you can talk to him and mm-hmm. correlate with him like that. But it's very dangerous. I'll agree with that. But this is the realization that most people don't have. They, they're like, man, I need to get prepared, prepared. And mm. they spend all their mm. life getting prepared and never actually yes. go out onto the field yes. to go out to the har- yes. harvest Preach. and take the harvest. Because they're like, man, Come I got to get my PhD first in uh, ministry school or whatever. Yes. And then I'll go out. No, Dude. bro. Like read at least the Bible one time. Get yourself clean Let's from your go. sin and go. Yeah. Like, so check this out. Sorry, um, I'm getting so pumped. Like, I apologize. But uh, in Acts 9, we were talking about Paul. I was like kind of looking at this and he encounters Jesus you know, on the road to Damascus. Yeah. He gets Ananias uh, to pray for him. The scales fall from his eyes. He gets prayed for. And by the way, Ananias was not some sort of like high priest. He was not. This was. It says there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. Can you imagine the guy who prayed for Paul the Apostle? His title was a disciple in, in uh, Damascus. Like, do you realize that that was his title? So right. you could be just a disciple in Northport, in uh, anywhere, in mm-hmm. Jacksonville, and you could be praying because of your obedience. You could be praying and in. in, in uh, having someone, you know, become Paul the Apostle through your obedience in Christ. But anyways, regardless, what did Paul do after that prayer? It says he immediately, it says he immediately uh, went, so for some days he was uh, with the disciples at Damascus, so he got saved, you know, he had the transformation, and he immediately proclaimed Jesus in the synagogues. Do you realize what Like, yes, Paul the Apostle, I will say, had enough background in the scriptures to where he could, like, he had enough understanding where he could put two and two together and then be like, okay, this is what, you know, he could, and he was a great speaker um, and intelligent, of course, but still, like, do you realize it's not like, it's not, do you realize they didn't, like, no one from the church 
stopped and said, and then they were like, yeah, you know, so we're going to need you to first get your bachelor's degree in, <laughs> in divinity or and something like, well, the thing is that that, that stuff never who, existed back so, then. So who yeah. qualified this? And this, and this is also kind of coming back like uh, full circle, who qualified Paul the apostle? The like same, the same person who qualifies us, Jesus, Jesus. Christ. Yeah. And, Amen. and, and who, who ordained him? Ananias. I mean, does that like, <laughs> like, like, I mean, let's be real because this is a real issue. Yes. Yeah. A big issue. Yeah. Definitely. And, um, it's kind of like when the, when God tells you, when God speaks to you, who can stand against you? When He's Amen. telling you to go preach, the rest of the church was freaked out by Paul. Everyone, he caused a lot of strength. But you see what happened. He was obedient, um, yeah. and uh, and actually to kind of go back though to to previous what we were saying earlier with like because I did want to touch upon this as well. Like both of you guys had amazing responses, you know, and um, like for example, Paul didn't. You know, he went out and was preaching. Part of one of the thing about it, uh, one of the things about preaching the gospel is it's always like um, a blessing to you, to the one preaching as much as, as the one to receive, you know? Right. So when the Holy Spirit's moving through you, you are receiving blessing and that, that actually encourages the believer to keep mm -hmm. going. But, um, but, and, and I love that you said like, well, if you're going out and you're worried that like, if you make a mistake that you're going to lose the protection of the Holy Spirit, then I don't know what Holy Spirit you're believing in. Yeah. Because true. like, there's Let's nothing go. you can do to change his mind about you. He has made up his mind. Yeah. That's true. Um, and then, and then lastly, uh, the, the one thing I wanted to, to just add on to that is like, um, we're by no means saying that your, all of your energy should be just with unbelievers because mm -hmm. that is, that is a dangerous place to be. But when you are surrounded by believers on like frequent, like frequently, and you are, and then when you do go out into the like the, the field with unbelievers, it's kind of like you have that just that that aroma about you. Like you just like you you act different because you're always around believers. And and so yes, if you're literally doing your life with unbelievers all the time, it's very high risk. But uh, at so, the same time, uh, real, real quick, sorry, you're okay. You're um, right. Real quick, Holy it's actually Spirit. funny Flow. because Come on. because with with Ronnie, so Ronnie's story about like uh, being you know. Uh, in the Navy, I remember I, I said this. I don't, I don't know if I actually said this to you, but I've said this to so many people. I'll, today's the. Um, I said, you know what? If there was anybody the Lord would choose to send into a really dark place, like you know, just on, you know, on a ship in the Navy, um, in Japan, it's my it's my man Ronnie. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> because Thank you. because you know he got he got filled he got that preparation with the believers with you know and he, yeah we would talk we'd call he would call up you know people other believers and get that recharge because you need that support you cannot make it solo but like the lord gives us the strength to go out in that uh right. in the field you know mm -hmm. and in the in the midst midst of the heat he will provide exactly. if you listen to the holy spirit if you're not going out there yourself if you're not saying oh lord like yeah the lord's not sending you and you're just like oh I'll go into strip clubs. I'll go into this. I'll, I'll preach the gospel. And the Lord didn't send you. You're not going to stand. But if the Lord right. sent you and you're saying, Come Lord, on. I'm afraid, I'm scared, you better believe he's with you. you Come know? on. So, if, I can, if I can kind of wrap up that part, uh, part with the, yeah, go the, for the it, pain brother. area. So, um, thank you for mentioning that. I really appreciate it. Uh, it was very dark. Um, I think within the first three months, I called him up and I was like, <laughs> I, I almost can't stand like... I'm, I'm at risk of like my faith was being put to the test because right. you're surrounded by almost no believers. Right. And I had yet to find, you know, solid church and uh, work, work is crazy. And you're just like, and you're, you know, no family. Right. Right. You're no kind of community. Like, you're on your own and you feel the weight mm -hmm. of almost a hopeless society. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. because you can tell, you can feel it. You can see the way people live and behave, even though they have a smile on their face because they, they, they are very good at faking it. You feel kind of like the, the hurt and the brokenness. How do you survive? If the Lord did call you to that, he will provide. So a few months later, you know, and, and you know, after our, our call, whatever, the Lord did provide. He found, found that church who was reaching the Japanese people. Wow. Come filled on. with hope, filled with um, optimism that the Lord would sweep over Japan. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we became, we became like them to reach them. And guess what happened? We won them. And not only did we win them, we equipped them and we Come sent on. them to reach mm -hmm. themselves. The gospel right there. Exactly. And and so now there's Japanese pastors. Not just not just uh you know Australian from you know Hillsong right. and foreigners just right right now now there's Japanese pastors who are reaching their community. And you know what what they tell me, the, the Japanese Christians that I meet, and I made some really good friends, Japanese Christian friends, you know, they tell me like I I was I 
if I can share real quick, um, one of my friends just messaged me the other day. She's like, I really need you to pray about suicide in Japan. And then she shared quickly her testimony. Like, actually, when I was 19, I, I had serious mental health issues. I thought about killing myself. And, you know, then I found Jesus. He, and I, I, I was like, you know, hesitant. And I was just, you know, on the edge. But like people showed me love and I accepted him. And now she is, uh, you know, I follow her on on social media. She is so vocal about it. She's about her faith. She's posting in English and in Japanese. She's reaching out Hallelujah. to her people. Ooh, and that's bro. how you save people. Yes. But but if, if she had, if, 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 we, you, if the people had been like, you know what? I, I'm not going to be about that. I'm not going to go there. And mm. you, because the only way you're going to win is if you become like them. Mm. Otherwise, you're destined to lose every time. I right. think I think that, uh, what's it called? God just, I just heard from the Holy Spirit, hey, open the Bible to Galatians. And then first thing was chapter three. And uh, this is, this is ties into what we're talking about. It says, oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. And this is the point where I want to bring to modern day Christianity. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Mm. Uh, pretty much pretty much what this means for us, just modern day Christians, is that did, whenever we were in the world, how did we come to know God? I mean, I was saved. And I'm not saved, but I was a Christian, born into a Christian family. But there's so many people that come into the world come into the world not Christian, then encounter Christianity later on in life, and then all of a sudden, as if the world is non-touchable, they're going to be in the church, never going to step church, back into the world to save other people that were that are struggling exactly the same thing that they were at. Mm -hmm. You know, we see the examples of what happens whenever, for instance, uh, let's just bring up a, a pastor, Todd White, whenever he, he literally conforming to the world view bringing people out best right. example dreadlocks i'm not right. even joking yeah yeah he walked into a weed store and the guy's like bro cool dreadlocks bro uh -huh. and he's just like yeah i know but jesus <laughs> <laughs> come on right off the bat and like he's he's come able on, to Todd. impact people because yeah he might look like them you know right. he walked he walked into a church and the people were saying that he knew, because nobody knew him at that church but he walked to the church and he was supposed to preach people were like this guy came in crocs and dreadlocks and shorts i mean he needs jesus mm -hmm. and the guy comes up on stage and starts preaching like that's the thing maybe he doesn't look like a, a, a normal christian but he's impacting people right i i want to say that the people who do get into that adopted faith and they don't go out they're being selfish. Well, now, so now that, hold on. Uh, I wanted to, uh, sorry, I wanted to add on just one more thing about my, about my uh, why I brought up that thing is that on top of it all, did the Christian norms and the Christian culture save you? No. No. That's what, that's what correlates with the, did the law save you or did the hearing of faith save you? And they were hanging on so tightly to the traditions. Yes. And of the of the of the uh, of the Jew, you know the Jews. Mm -hmm. They were like the, they were they were putting the traditions that they had they had developed on the same level as the word of God. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. Strip away, strip away the, the church's culture. Strip away the culture, the norm. Strip away all that stuff. Watch, look what happened with Corona. Whenever coronavirus hit. How many people fell away from the church because the church was their identity rather than yes. Christ being their identity? Yes, true. How many people fell away? Because what happened was, okay, I'm in a bubble. I'm in a safe space. The moment when that safe space gets popped, I have nothing left because I do not know who's up there. And whenever I know who's up there, he that that one who's up there is going to drive me out to the world to speak to those people. You cannot walk around the street knowing who God is and have a relationship with Christ and not being able to open up and share Christ. That that's not mm -hmm. physically possible to have mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit inside you and fully controlling you mm -hmm. and not being able to speak to unbelievers. So my my whole entire question to a person that literally is saying, "Well, no, I cannot conform to your standards." Do you have the Holy Spirit controlling your life or are you controlling your life? Because he's a gentleman. He's always going to be control. He's always going to be controlling your life to a point, not controlling your life because he's a God of free will, but he's always going to be working inside your life to a point and the boundaries that you set. Your boundaries can be this big or your boundaries can be your whole life. Right. Like the thing is that ask yourself the question, is the boundary my whole entire life or is the boundary just church? Because if the boundary is, if you're one person in church, one person at home, one person at work, of course you're going to have a battle. How can I be like them at work? 
But in reality, you already are like them at work. You're already cussing and doing things like they do at work. You're just not being a Christian. The thing is, are you going to be a Christian in all parts of your life? Or are you going to be a Christian in just one part of your life? Yeah. Or better question, are you going to let Jesus be all for every part of your life? Or are you, going to be, or are you just going to let him be Jesus for you only whenever somebody's speaking a word from the pulpit? Yeah. Or, or better yet, when somebody needs something. When you need yeah. something.